Rabo soya ve ke rebe amanaya ve. She rebe abasa ya ve ke lebe abo so rabadandre ve. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first. He is the last. He is who was and who is and who is to come in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this a place of worship? Hallelujah. Is this a place of praise? Is this a place of thanksgiving? Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is worthy to be given praise. He is worthy. He is worthy. It is an honor to be here this evening. We're not done yet. Stay in an attitude of worship. If you have your heavenly language, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray your perfect prayers. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. I thank you that the Comforter is with us and working on our behalf even right now. Even right now as we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, things are beginning to move. Things are beginning to shift. Things are beginning to change. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I say again this evening, we do not come in our own authority, but I do come in the name of Jesus. And I call upon the name of Jesus on our own, on your behalf. On the behalf of this church, on the behalf of this community, on the behalf of this nation, on the behalf of this nation, one nation under God, one nation under God, hallelujah, indivisible, not divided in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah, I don't know if you, some of you know what's been going on, but we have a little bit of a, a little bit of some intensity this evening so far, but we are honored to be here. You guys are full of the Holy Ghost. When we were walking, as we were walking in, the presence of God was so thick and strong. Thank you. Truly, thank you. Thank you for staying in the presence of God. Thank you for being conduits. You are conduits. You are couriers and carriers of the Holy Ghost. You're couriers and carriers of the Spirit of God everywhere you go. And it is very apparent here in this house. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, it's an honor to be here this evening. I'm Heather Z. <laughs> I belong to this man. We've been married for 25 years, together for 27, and been doing ministry much longer. <laughs> so it has just been an honor to be. I, I look forward to what the Lord has this evening. I truly do. He has something specific, architect specifically for you and your family. For those who have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying for you. For you on an individual level, for you in your marriage, for you in your family, for you in your household, in this church and in this community. This place is a signpost to Montana. You're a signpost. You know how the cowboys have like an outpost? This is, a, this is like an outpost and a signpost for the children of God. For those who are thirsty and needing to hear the Spirit as worship was playing, it is God-breathed. It is God-breathed. And you are a sign. And you will be a sign and a wonder to those who come in here. They will say, surely God is in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Man, I just want to pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment, but <laughs> hallelujah, Jesus. The fire of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. The presence of God. 
When the presence of God is present, there is nothing that can't be handled. There's nothing that can't be conquered. There's nothing that can't be healed. There's nothing that can't be delivered. There's nothing that can't be made whole. Hallelujah, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you our best praise. Let the high praise of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you our best praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're a holy God. He's a holy God. He's a holy God on your behalf. Give him praise for whatever you have need of. Take it right now. Hallelujah, God. We just release it right now. Healing and wholeness in the house right now. Deliverance in the house right now. Hallelujah. Financial freedom right now. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop with this. But we have a saying that we want to make God rich. We're going to make God rich. We're making God rich. You know how we make God rich? You, or someone who isn't, ha, is rich and has everything? You give them the one thing they don't have. And that's giving him his kids back. It's salvation. It's literally snatching them out of the gates of hell. And saying, here you go, Lord. That's how we make God rich. And my favorite is, is going back home and bragging on the spoils that we just attained by whether it's salvation or whether it's, it's testimonies of miracles and healings. Those are the spoils. Seeing those healed, delivered, whole, and set free. And that's going to come out of here. This house. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm Heather Z, and I approve this message. Amen. And his name is Jesus, and he is Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to hand this over to Joseph. Love you, honey. Awesome. Isn't Jesus good? America. Do not fear. The attack shall turn to a comeback. For I am the Lord your God and I do not fail. I am the way maker and I am making a way in this land. And over the next two years, the right sizing will begin. Seasons will come and seasons will go and the God mockers will be dealt with. For I have heard the prayers of this land and I've heard the prayers of my children and I am acting, says the Lord. What was meant for evil today, I will turn out for the good. I will confront the spirit of Antichrist through you and strength will rise. And I tell you, this one will say that, and that one will say that, and another will say this, but the shot that has been heard around the world has come to pass. The Lord spoke to me over the last six months about the shot around the world, the shot around the world, and we've been going through and looking at the videos of it from date-stamped meetings, and even early this morning in our broadcast, we prophesied the Paul Revere anointing was coming from the shot around the world that would come and manifest. And so now the shot has happened and that Paul Revere awakening, reformer, warning, message anointing is going and the Lord is bringing a strong word now and America shall be saved.
America had the choice of fire or Nineveh. One way or another, it was coming to its knees. And I believe we're going to get a mix until it turns the way of Nineveh. We need to be strong. That's why we're in Montana. You guys don't mess around here. You're the sort that will, you know, kind of protect your 1A rights with your two amendment rights. I feel strong in this place. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Be seated. We didn't get all dressed up for nothing. God bless you guys. Worship team, thank you. It's so powerful. So powerful. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I'm really happy to be here. We, we've been praying about locations that God would have us go to. And this place here... I know we have a divine appointment to be here. We've suddenly had massive uh, growth and acceleration in our ministry and our program over the last year and a half. And this last season has been very, very demanding. There's been a lot to it. And so I've been had, having to be very careful where we go and how much we can put out. And the Holy Spirit pointed at Montana. And he said, you got to go to that church in Billings, man. And I'm just, I'm very honored to be with you. I really am. And so we're a praying ministry. We're wild ministry. We believe Jesus. We believe the Bible. You know, I believe in clear-eyed, clear-minded prophetic ministers, not the thousand-yard stare, weird prophetic ministers. Storm's coming. It's not bad, it's worse, right? But God is going to touch people here. There's going to be an impartation. Many years ago, I was at a meeting called the Brownsville Revival, and I was there in the 90s, you know, and I'd been there. I love your pastors already. We, we got to talk. You guys are very blessed to have who you have. And we're, we're in this Brownsville Revival, and, you know, uh, Pastor Sean, I was there, and as I was leaving the revival, we'd been there all week. You know, people running to the altar, crying out, God, don't kill me, pretty much. and Because um, there was a holiness in that place. I'm talking, get your attention. You're repent repenting of things you didn't do, you know? <laughs> and so, man, I'll tell you, I, I was in that atmosphere of revival in this open heaven type of setting. And it was so powerful and so lit with the power of God. At the end of those meetings, day after day, we were there for a week. I left and I went and got on our bus and I had to go all the way back to Minnesota, from Florida to Minnesota. And as I'm getting on the bus, I go walking on and I go to sit down in the seat where I was seated on the bus. And as I did, I'm taking my seat. And as I sat down, I was taken out of my body. I left the bus. Now, whether I was in my body or out of my body, I sincerely don't know. But I left. All of a sudden, I found myself standing in a large space that was all concrete. Everything, as far as the eye could see, was concrete. Everywhere. The whole ground was concrete. Buildings in the distance were all just concrete. Trees were concrete. Everything was concrete, solid stone. And I'm standing there, and it was as real. It was as real as standing here right now looking at you. And as I was standing there, I suddenly looked into my right hand. Pastor Sean, in my right hand, there was a small white seed in this trance. And I heard a voice that said, throw the seed. So I did. I took the seed and I threw it. And when I did, it lobbed up, and it came down. But when it came down, it came down with the force of several tons. It hit the ground, smashed it, and the concrete burst up in a giant cone shape like ice, if you were to break that. 
and dirt flew up from the center, and it was about a 20 to 30 foot wide crater that I was looking into standing at the edge of it. And a voice spoke very powerfully and said, so shall your words be with the hearts of men. And I knew in that instance I was called to not only speak that way, but raise up an army that way. To bring results. And right after that trance, all of a sudden I came back and I'm sitting in the bus seat and my cousin was next to me. I looked at him and he said, what's up? And I said, what's up? I didn't even talk about that for the longest time. And I know the spirit of the Lord is doing something in this nation. Now look, I love all the nations. Every nation matters to Jesus. But we just happen to live in this one. And we have a job to do here. And people say you ought to separate church and state because, you know, there's these laws on the books and all that, and that's a misconstrued interpretation of a letter that Thomas Jefferson wrote and all these things, right? But then you get down to Romans 13, and people use that like a weapon against preachers and say you've got to obey the laws of the land. Well, I want to challenge that thought. If that's true, we ought to really obey the Constitution, And we ought to really enforce what that thing says. Because you know the thing. Okay, hang in there. <laughs> the Lord has showed me a number of things that would begin to happen over this course of time. And I'm being very careful how I pray and prophesy right now because I know we have like a, a window a window to take this nation. But it's a window. It's not a gate. It's a window. But the Lord is giving it to us because of prayer. Back on September 16th of 2023, I was in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I woke up early in the morning. I, I got up, but I really wasn't awake. I thought I got up, and when I woke up, I was standing in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I said to Heather in the dream, I'm in Las Vegas. What are we doing in Las Vegas? We went to sleep in Tulsa, and I'm in Las Vegas. And then a voice spoke and said, what happens in Vegas won't stay in Vegas. I'm like, and I didn't know what that meant. And then when I got out of that dream later, I looked what was going on in Vegas, and there was a cyber attack holding some hotels and casinos hostage. And the Lord spoke to me and said, what is happening there will go global. Cyber things. And then the Super Bowl was a second part of that word. The Super Bowl happened, but just before that, in that same dream, the Spirit of the Lord said, and Israel will march against their enemies. And three weeks later, that's exactly what they did. And during the Super Bowl, not that we try to make prophecies out of everything that we look at, but I got to tell you, there's sometimes I look at things and God speaks so loudly, I have to obey it. And I go to the Word of God and I stand on Scripture, learn from us, to not go beyond what is written, 1 Corinthians 4, 6. But that being said, we are to interpret the signs of the times. That being said, the sons of Issachar knew the signs of the times. They knew what to do about it, and they knew who they were with. Those three things. 1 Chronicles 12, 32. So Jesus said, how is it that you can interpret the signs of the weather, but you can't interpret the signs of the times? If you can't do that as a prophetic person, you're a hypocrite, he said. It usually goes over about like that, Pastor, yeah. Aha. And I'm, I'm interpreting these things, and I saw the Super Bowl, and the Lord said 2024 was a year of do-overs. A year of do-overs. You know, in 2015, the Lord sent Heather and I to Trump Tower. We went and stayed in Trump Tower. Heather said, this food is good. I was like, it's expensive. <laughs> Spendy. And I'm there, and I began to ask the Lord, Lord, why did you send me to this tower? Why here? Why am I here? And began to speak to me, and, and I, I just really said, have you shown me that he's going to be the president in the next election? Is it my time, Lord? Do I get to say it? And the Lord said, I have not graced you to know that. And I kid you not, in the hotel room, I looked at Heather, because he said to me, but I have told Lance Wall now. And I'm like, I think I've heard of that guy. 
And then shortly after that, I said, Lord, then why am I here? What is this about? He said, pray for this man, pray for this nation. I said, Lord, is America going to go down? Is America over? Is Jezebel going to take the White House? And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, no, America has one more round because the young lions are coming. They're coming. So I recognized that picture and the Lord took me on this journey this journey. And now 2024 is a year of do-overs. 2020 and 19 and 20, uh, I had a prophetic word where I said the president will not, re he will not win the election. He's going to lose through technology. Now, I believe the other thing really happened, but in the public eye, this is what was to be said. And I'll tell you, people stayed away from me by the thousands at that point. Ha <laughs> Praise God. And after that, the Lord began to minister many things to me. Many things. And one of the things he's telling me about this year is that this is a year of do-overs. So interestingly enough, Heather and I just celebrated our 25th anniversary. We, we got away. We were gifted a trip, and we went to a hotel. And as we're in this hotel... We get up to the floor where they show us this beautiful scenery and we're looking out across the landscape and the concierge or the person looked at us and said, this is a brand new named hotel. We renamed it. And we said, oh, what was the old name? And they said, oh, this was Trump Hotel, Trump Tower. And I looked at Heather and I said, are you kidding me? And once again, the Spirit of the Lord said, I told you it's a year of do-overs. And I'm seeing these things happen. The same Super Bowl team happens. The same people are fighting in sports. We see all these things taking place. And now we're right here, basically on the end game of this cycle for picking our leaders. And look, I don't bank everything on who gets in the White House. We can't. They can't fix it. They can't fix it. And the wicked lizard overlords over at the WEF, you know, they're trying to make us all eat bugs and crawl on our bellies and have digital prisons. What are the, I mean, they're like the pervert mafia. What a bunch of scumbags, right? And so we're, is that too much? Was it too soon though? Everybody okay? All right. This is our, really our church. All right. This is our church. You were all nothing and you would love it, right? You will eat bugs. Oh. I'm going to step down. <laughs> you recognize Klaus is stepping down? We did not see that coming. Whatever. Okay. So, you know the guy's a Nazi, right? Okay. So, having said this, we're looking at all these world leaders that are trying to run us right into the ground. They're trying to run society into the ground because they're empowered by the spirit of Antichrist, but brought to you by Antichrist. And, and we're looking at these people that are trying to dominate our lives, and the only reason this is being allowed is because the body of Christ thinks we're supposed to roll over, show our belly, and just go into a fetal position. Well, maybe in another nation, that's what Romans 13 dictates to them, but not in America. In America, it's we the people. And if we're going to be biblical, that means we need to enforce what's on the books by the founding fathers. Anybody else like me in here and when July 4th happens and suddenly you hear the Star Spangled Banner or... America the Beautiful, any of the songs, or National Anthem, do you cry? I come unglued. I was talking with a dear friend of mine, Pastor Mark Cowart. He's amazing. And he said, brother, welcome to the party. He said, God's putting a mantle on you to love this country. Because you're called to right size and bring order to it. I was in a meeting a while back. But a year and a half ago, standing in this meeting, a prophetic ministry began to break out in the meeting. It was real subtle, real calm. And as I'm in this meeting, prophecy's kind of subtly happening, and I'm in the back, back there. And all of a sudden, it was like a supernatural, spiritually audible voice came across the auditorium, hit me in my intellect, and hit me in my spirit, and knocked me into my chair. And it said this, come up here, come up higher, 
come up where I am, Joseph. And I know Revelation 4, 1, but I'm sitting in the chair and I said, Lord, yes. What do you mean? I'll do anything you want, but it hit me so hard. And then there was no answer. Until early one morning, about maybe a month later, three weeks later, I'm in Colorado Springs. The Lord gets me up early in the morning and said, I want you to go to the top of Pikes Peak. I want you to jump in the truck and go up to Pikes Peak, grab my son Daniel, and we drove all the way to the top of Pikes Peak. And we were planning some ministry that we were going to plant in other states, do things, and start establishing different scenarios. And as I stood on the top of Pikes Peak, the Lord said to me, I have not called you to leave, and I've called you to America's mountain. Because Pikes Peak is the purple mountain majesty in the song. And it's known as America's mountain. And I stood there and I began to look around at all the mountain ranges and all the things. And the Lord began to call me to America. Now, I'm not just called to America. We do international ministry. We were just in Moscow, Russia, walking around Red Square. People are like, what's it like there? It's like America was in the 90s. Yeah. You're free to vote. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but if we don't like your choice, no, just kidding. But no, I got to tell you, I really enjoyed being there. There's a, there's a revival breaking out in that nation. The leaders, and I won't go into detail, but I know things. The leaders are meeting with different ones saying, we need conservatism. We need godliness. We need Judeo-Christian morals in our nation. That's the real story happening over there. We've been there twice in the last year, preached in churches, got, got granted a special visa to do so. And we stood in one service and the Lord said, Joseph, say what I want you to say. I said, yes, sir, I'm yours to command. I'm in the service and the Lord told me to tell them, I love Russia. Now, I'm an American standing in Russia. And our presidents, I was cutting down the nation, cutting down the leaders. And I'm not into the politics, I'm talking about the people. That thing could go sideways any day. I'm just talking about the people, right? So I'm standing there and I just release this word. God says he loves Russia. And Heather and I stood together and we said, and we love Russia. And people started weeping, they began to cry. And it was like this healing anointing came across the auditorium. And it happened more than once. And I feel the spirit of the Lord saying he's going to bring another wave. Now, we've got a number of things we're going to be fighting very soon here. Artificial intelligence, which these geniuses are mechanizing into a runaway scenario. It's going to have several different branches, several different forms of it, fighting one another, learning from one another. It's not one, you know, mission impossible, um, what is it, the entity. It's not that. It's going to be multiple entities that are learning and doing all this stuff. But I still believe there's a holding pattern. We can hold some of these things back. If you're a thinking person, you can look at what's going on and recognize it's building the Antichrist system right in front of us. But I, I just got to tell you guys. If the Antichrist showed up on our watch, we rebuke him in Jesus' name. Amen. Last time I checked, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the he that is in the world is the Antichrist. So we have the greater one in us. Now, wherever your eschatology is, we'll go with mine tonight because I have the mic. <laughs> People are like, well, I think it says this, I think it says that. Yeah, but I have the mic, so we'll go with this. Yeah. Jesus is Lord. You know, the real eschatology should be Jesus wins. Okay? Praise God. I definitely have strong opinions like people in Montana. I love this state. It reminds me a little bit of Minnesota with more cowboy. It's like Minnesota with more cowboy. Praise God. God's going to begin to touch people in this place. And I've, I've been hearing the voice of God since I was nine years old. I had to walk through that and weigh it out. And what is this? He called me when I was nine. 
Nine years old, I was in a field. I grew up on a ranch, a farmer, farm kid on this ranch. And I remember I was out doing work and with my German shepherd, Duke. We're out in the middle of the Thule's in the back 40, right? And all of a sudden, I heard a voice audibly call my name over the trees. It sounded like an echo, but on the wind. Called my name to the point I yelled back, what? And kept calling my name. And then I thought, it's my dad. So I got in this ATV, went all the way back to the house. And I said, you're yelling for me, calling me. He said, I didn't call you. Get back to work. And that happened several times. And I began to recognize God was speaking to me. And I think there's a lot of things that happen with people in the body of Christ where they have experiences or people have strange giftings. And if they don't add the word of God to it, they can become strange. They can become strange. And I've learned to lay off the gas on the gifting part of it, take the foot off the pedal a little bit, and begin to lean into the word of God. Because when you lean in the word of God, no matter what your gifting is, it'll right-size it. I had a lot of prophetic people come to me, and this is kind of a prophetic weekend. And again, we didn't get all dressed up for nothing. And they come to me and say, you know, I don't need the Bible. I have the Holy Spirit. I have relationship. And, and I want to say, and you've got stupid. Because without the Bible, you're absolutely out of control. You're a train wreck waiting to happen. And you say, well, how long do we read the Bible? You read the Bible until it starts talking back to you. You read it, and you read it some more. But a lot of people, they have what I call the rake anointing. Well, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I was a kid one time. I'm walking through this really tall grass. I'm walking through the grass, and you know those, you know those garden claw rakes with the metal teeth? Well, I stepped on one of those, you know, and I had an encounter. <laughs> yep, I learned something that day. Don't run blindly through tall grass, and if you see a rake, don't step on it. Right? But some people, they, they step on it, and they're like, ow, hmm, may I have another? And it's almost like they just keep stepping on it. And then they'll run. And they come back and they're like, hey man, are you okay? Like your face. And then they get all like, you know, spiritual. And they're like, don't judge me. You can't judge me. You haven't walked a mile in my shoes. And I want to say, no kidding. I don't want to, right? But the thing is, a lot of people don't learn. But the word of God will right size things in your life. Praise God, you read that Bible, you listen to your leaders, and God's got a good plan for you. It was nearly 20 years I carried bags of prophets around the world. Had invitations to preach everywhere. I carried bags. There came a point, I'll never forget it, where the Lord asked me to sit down for a season because we were doing things. And he asked me to sit down and honor my family and love my family. And it got really, really serious. And so we sat down for two years, canceled stadium meetings, all that stuff. And I believe this is the season where people that are willing to do the difficult, God will use to do the impossible. Praise God. Man, there's some voltage in this place. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God recently gave us a building. We're working things out with it because he told me, call it the World Broadcast Center. I'm like, Lord, I don't even have a congregation. He's like, it's not for a congregation, it's for a studio. And he gave us this building and we've, we've been working diligently at it. And we're just now starting to get to the point where we're getting permissions to actually remodel it. And we've been fighting, you know, with, uh, codes and all that stuff, and now we're getting there, and it's wonderful. And we're going to start radically remodeling it because I want to build a studio to broadcast all over the, the world and the nations 
with a prophetic flow with what God's called us to do. Sid Roth was so excited about it. His network picked us up every morning. So when we go live on our broadcast, which we do every single day, we're live on Sid Roth's television network live in real time. And the Lord's beginning to fulfill things that he said, I want you to do. And so we're walking it through. And after that time where we were alone in the mountains and we stopped, I'll never forget this. (laughs) I had the Lord show up and tell me through a messenger, if you get my meaning. He didn't materialize in front of me, but man, I'll tell you what, a voice roared into the room right through my being and said, I come to you from the great God, Jehovah, and there will be a turning of a tide that is yet to come. And you must prepare. I'm changing things. And he wants you to know that you are not needed now, but you're needed more after the 2020 election. So make ready, prepare. And he told me a whole bunch of things that we were to do for, with our team. And there'd be change coming and to get ready. So we did. We did. I think, you know, I told Jason about these things, and he's like, okay, let's go. Anybody here watch our broadcast in the morning? Oh, wow, look at you guys. Wonderful. The rest of you need to watch our broadcast in the morning. (laughs) Praise God. You're like, we're from Montana. You can't tell me what to do. (laughs) Hallelujah. No, we do those broadcasts for you. We're live nearly every day. Sometimes we're not when we travel. We have to prepare something. But most of the time, we're, we're live. We're talking about real events, prophetic journalism, all the things. Teach the word of God. Prophesy to people on the broadcast. We have a, a call team that reaches out and ministers to our partners and people. Thank you, Jesus. But no, this angelic messenger told me, get ready, do this stuff, and we've been doing it. And then, of course, right up to the pandemic, remember that? We got up to the pandemic, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, cancel all travel, stay home, and go into your studio and start getting ready. Start filming, preparing, preparing. And when it happened, we were on the leading edge of it. We knew exactly what to do because we were ready. The Lord told us to be ready. And we'd already seen massive expansion reaching people, and now we're you know, reaching millions and millions of people all the time. And I'm so grateful to the Lord. It's certainly not about the reach. It's about the people. And I believe God is going to do something magnificent for people that have been radically obedient. I was just talking to a number of different prophets today because we've had quite a day, everybody. I spent about, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 minutes weeping uh, right after I saw the news today with what took place with the former president. But I do believe this is the beginning of the turnaround. It's going to be a fight, though, okay? It's not going to be easy peasy. We just got to stay strong in faith. And uh, if they can't do one thing, they'll do another. Don't be surprised if suddenly there's not another, you know, ailment coming out. I believe that they're cooking up another pandemic. I sense it coming. I sense it coming. They're going to name it some new thing or just rely on the good old faithful bird flu. Praise God. But they're going to try to release this. You're going to see more and more and more of it as they feel the grip of their control leaving their hands. But there's also good news in this. There's a spirit of confusion in the enemy's camp. There really is. They're not executing their plans perfectly. You got to know that. Sometimes we think, oh, the enemy's so brilliant and we're so confused. No, they're confused. They don't know what to do with Uncle Joe. (laughs) They're like, step down. No, I don't think I will. (laughs) At least Trump's his VP. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm, a... <laughs> I'm kind of a patriot. I like this country. I don't like what these clowns are doing to it. I don't know what these unelected officials in other nations are doing, telling us how we're going to live. I don't like what the WHO is telling us we're going to do with our own medical sovereignty. We should be furious about this. 
If it was like Civil War times, if it was revolutionary times, if it was back in the day, I'll tell you what, there'd have been some very serious actions taken. Constitutional ones. And I believe the Spirit of God is going to bring a move of patriotism back to this nation. I know there's other preachers and people that say, oh, don't get into all the patriotism. Don't go down these roads. Are you smacked out of your melon? Well, if America goes down, we still have the church. Yes and amen, but we're going to be preaching under communism. I'm sure if the Christians in China could have it this way, they would. The way we have freedom right now. And praise God, the church will stand no matter what. But many times, the nations won't because people just, they draw back. And look, I'm not saying we need to storm the castle, get pitchforks and torches. I'm just saying we need to pray, we need to act, we need to get on school boards, we need to do everything we can in our area. This town right here, you could take this town. Lord spoke to me and said, the young lions are coming. And I believe it is Generation Alpha. I believe they're going to live up to their name. All this beta male movement out there. I like soy milk. What do you like? Hallelujah. Woo. Too much. Everybody okay? <laughs> I'm for everybody. I'm not against anybody. I love brothers and sisters. I love guys that are weak. I love guys that are strong. I like people that are wherever they are in life. But what I don't like is the mentality that's trying to cripple men. It's a crippling of men. The devil hates women and the devil hates men the head of the house, the leader. It became trendy to make men stupid. You know, you want to have a good woman? Be a clear-eyed, clear-minded, know what you're doing, man of God. Be righteous. Brother, you don't have to be that good looking. <laughs> I'm serious. You don't even have to be that good looking. Just know what you're about. And women are like, oh. <laughs> There's a drought of real men today. I don't know when that Jezzy girl got into the culture. You know, Jezebel. <laughs> it's that Jezzy girl. Da -da 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 -da. How do you fight a demon like that? She comes into the culture, did it to dead. She's on the balcony, yeah, did it to dead. Oh, get those puppies, right? Jezebel. That's not a gender thing, just so you know. Of which there are two. <laughs> the spirit of confusion. People are like, how dare you? I'm like, uh, you stepped on a lot of rakes to get to this point. <laughs> but you know, I do think something's coming in the culture, rising up. Praise God. <laughs> I like Pastor Sean. I'm over here thinking about movie quotes now. <laughs> but something's rising up. It's back on the streets. <laughs> took our time, took our chances. Amen. Went the distance. Now we're not going to stop. Okay, whatever. You guys, some of you are like. <laughs> the church does need to get a little bit of Rocky Three in them. Where when we get attacked, we say, ain't so bad, ain't so bad, you ain't so bad. My mother hits harder than that. <laughs> Some of you are from Montana, and you're like, amen, amen. <laughs> but Jezebel's on the balcony, and you know what I think is going to rise up against that? Those little fellows that were behind her. <laughs> no? <laughs> yoo -hoo. You and they came up and they set her at flight. 
Jazzy girl. Da, 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 da. Ah! Bro, she didn't even bounce, right? <laughs> and then the chariot comes. I'm telling you, I think there's going to be a revival from that community. Because they're going to do what they do best. Rebel. They're going to rebel against rebellion. And I believe there's going to be a strong striking down of that spirit. And the real prophets are going to stand up. The real voices of God are going to stand up. The Elijahs are going to stand up. The prophets of fire. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. There are a lot of things coming, and I believe the Lord took us from a time of grace in this nation to a time of mercy. And an extension of mercy is upon us. I even asked the Lord, Lord, how are we going to stop all of this crazy runaway economic scenario? How do we stop it? Can we fix the economy? And the Lord spoke to me and said, yes, oil. Oil and autonomy, securing the perimeter and drilling everywhere. I don't know what they're going to do, but that's what the Lord spoke to me. We won't fix it in a day. We won't fix it in a month. We won't fix it in a year, but we can start taking a dent out of it. We can start turning the corner. And it is a massive, unbelievable amount of debt. But God can do anything with the right people, the right plan, the right leadership. I have hope for the future. I'm, I am standing here right now, and I'm getting a vision of a massive earthquake. Right now. I see this massive earthquake, and it's very monumental where it's hitting. For I'm watching over my people, and I hear this, and my spirit is displeased with the wickedness that has gone on. But God needs us. People think if God wants to, he'll do it. No, 1 John 4. As he is, so are we in this world. We're his hands and feet. We're the body of Christ. We're free moral agents that authorize the spirit of God to move on this earth. So we got to pray and act. Pray and what do we do, God? Thank you, Jesus. God's going to touch some of you guys in here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to our Bibles real quick. Is that okay? Let's go to Psalm 126. Psalm 126. I believe this is a prophetic word for America and the church in America. Okay, go with me if you would. Psalm 126. Give me an amen if you're with me. Amen. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, verse 1, we were like those who dream. Isn't that good? He's saying, when I got you out of captivity, you were in a dream. It was like you were dreaming. It was so good. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. And they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Verse 4, bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. And verse 5, those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. When you look at this scripture, you recognize there's a breakthrough for those that stay in God's economy through the whole thing. But when you sow in tears, I call those diamond seeds. This isn't some kind of weird message on financials. I'm talking about your life, okay? Diamond seeds are where you take actions 
that are not popular, they're not easy, they're challenging, and yet you do them because you know it's right. It's where you take your life and you pour it forward for the kingdom of God. You make character-based decisions. You make honor-based decisions. You do what's right for the future. You do what's right in your life. And yes, with your financials, yes, with your life, yes, with your property, yes, with your children, with everything. And what you sow in tears under duress and difficulty, you put that in the ground and it's challenging, but you will reap with songs of joy because God wants you to live more than you do. Do you know God wants you to live a great life even more than you do? It's the devil who wants to steal, kill, and destroy. What what did Jesus say in John 10, 10? But I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And it's that word Zoe, the God quality of life. I want you to be like a chip off the old block. I want you to walk around knowing who you are. If somebody ever asked you who you are in Christ Jesus, you ought to say, how much time do you have? As a matter of fact, your presence should demand an explanation. The world's dead, you're alive. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. A lot of believers walk around like we don't got nothing. We walk around like we're not loaded. But you're fully loaded. I mean, 130, you is wall to wall, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. You are full of juice, man. I remember when I first got a hold of this stuff when I was younger, would read the whole Bible every week, well, the whole New Testament every week. And I'd just walk into places, and man, I'll tell you, demons just started screaming out of people. I'm like, whoa, hey, gas stations, ah, ah. I remember coming out of a restroom at a gas station and somebody's there. Yeah, I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord came on me and I said, go stand in the corner. And he's like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> yeah. Brother, didn't you cast it out? No. I had to get to a meeting. <laughs> I don't know if they're still there. <laughs> Praise God. Do you know, I think, I think the spirit of the Lord is a joyful spirit. I think before the fall of man, I don't think God ever had a serious thought. I think he was full of joy. I think he was full of love. I think he was planning his creation. It says that in Proverbs chapter 8, that wisdom was ever before the Lord, and it was his delight. And wisdom, which is Jesus, pre-incarnate, His delight was in the sons of men, but the delight of the Father was in wisdom, in Jesus. It's an interesting cycle, really. God delights in the Son, the Son delights in man, and man delights in the Son, and the Son delights back to the Father, and back and forth we go. I think that's awesome. When God spoke light be, he was speaking through Jesus. The Word made flesh. The Word created the world's. And everybody's so worried about if God wants you to have this or do that or whatever. You know, God is so wasteful. People are like, how can you say that? That is not Dave Ramsey talking. (laughs) God bless Dave Ramsey, amen. But listen, you you know, that is not, that's not right. Have you ever considered how much a star puts out? Why? Why? You ever considered how big the universe is and how many of those things are out there? People are like, well, that's if you believe in the universe. You believe in the flat earth and the thing. And the, the, so, so, okay, well, let's go that way. Whatever it is, okay? All right, whatever you're looking at. You know, the bottom line is, is all the stars that are out there, when you're looking at that, that is wasteful. It's just burning. I mean... One star, I mean, just a segment of one star, the earth doesn't have enough power or anything to keep up with that much energy. Just one little piece of a star. And there's trillions of them. And they're burning and raging, and it's just this energy being released all the time. We just can't even see it. And we're like, hmm, 
I wonder if God's cool if I like, you know, get something else or grow into this or expand. When you grow, you're acting like your father. Now, look, I'm not talking about greed. I'm not talking about weird stuff. I'm not talking about off-base stuff. I'm just talking about we need to get a God mindset in us through his word. And he never says, oh, cut back, be nothing, shrink back. Uh Uh-uh. The Lord is a God of expansion, growth, increase, busting the yoke. Isaiah 10, 27, you know, that's in three parts, right? The anointing breaks the yoke. It says in the anointing, because they were under political, governmental oppression. And then it says that the anointing will, first of all, lift the yoke off the shoulder. It'll loosen it from the neck, and then it'll destroy it. Three steps, 30, 60, and 100 fold. So you see it coming off the shoulder, and many people in the body of Christ, and what it's talking about If you look in different translations, some translations say the anointing oil. Some translations say the fatness or the muscularity. You're going to get rid of the yolk. (laughs) You remember, Maria, yeah, no, whatever. And so, (laughs) but because the muscularity grows and it grows some more, the yolk can't contain it. It's talking about the children of Israel as a people outgrowing and becoming more populated than the oppressor. They outgrew them. But for you and I, it's talking about outgrowing circumstances that are trying to hold you. It's not just, it's not just wave a hand on you, you know, Benny Hinn, whatever. God bless him. Amen. Stand them up against Steve. You know what they've got going on over here, you know. But I'm talking like you, you know, you wave the hand and the anointing breaks. Yeah, woo! You know, it's I'm free. Hallelujah. Well, good. But you need a long term outgrowth. You need to outgrow issues. What happens is when you get a hold of what the spirit of God puts on you is you begin to outgrow your issues. Nothing can contain you anymore in your health, in your resources, in your family, in people oppressing your mind. Some of you need to get delivered of people. We made a rule in our family. We don't hang out with anybody that makes us feel bad. Had too much of that. People like, well, uncle so-and-so is going to be at Christmas and they're there and they're going to get wasted. And they're going to, I'm like, I ain't going. Everybody okay? I mean, if you're cool with it and it doesn't affect you, have a good time. (laughs) That was probably too much for everybody. Yeah. But, but the yoke looks like this. You get filled with the spirit of God. You get filled with knowledge and revelation and the, the, the understanding of who he is in you, Christ in you. The eyes of your understanding are being enlightened. You begin to outgrow the yoke. You begin to stand up under pressure. And suddenly the yoke gets lighter on your shoulder. And many people in the body of Christ, they feel a little bit of breakthrough. They feel the yoke lightening off their shoulder. And they think, I'm free. I am free to run, right? I am free to dance, charismatic jig, you know, right? And they think they're totally free, but that's 30-fold. And Jesus said, by this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and your fruit remain. And you recognize you go from 30-fold to 60-fold, suddenly you're not only lighter, you can move your head. You get a vision. You can start seeing things. I'm really free. I'm totally broken through. I'm totally broken through. But yet there's still that segment of your life where you're not totally free. But the anointing comes, which is a marking by God for a designated purpose in this life. It's not just a, ooh, Mufasa. It's not just that. I love that. We were talking about Mark Hankins. You come into a Mark Hankins meeting, he's like, oh, glory, you know. Nobody, okay. But (laughs) you get into certain meetings, and I like falling on the ground. I like feeling the power of God shoot through my being. I think it's great, but that only changes you momentarily. What really changes you is when you begin to put the word of God and you practice the the life of Jesus. You practice the word of God. Uh, You're not moved by your emotions. So many people in this generation are so moved by their emotions. You don't know what I've been through. Nobody knows what you've been through. And you don't know what we've been through. So here's what we do. We love one another. And I'll tell you what, we got mercy and love for you if you're going through things. We love you. We embrace you. And you are, if you're in this place, we are here for that. 
Heather and I stay and pray for people like you can't believe. But here's what I want to say to you. 30, 60, and a hundredfold breakthrough is when you finally get liberated and you don't just have lightness, you don't just have vision, suddenly you're totally empowered to do it. You know what God's called you to do. You're able to take the territory he's giving you. And that spirit of apathy that's in the church is the reason this nation's having trouble. It's the reason we have sons that don't know who they are. I got thrown out of my house at 13. 13 years old. Because I got born again. And you know what? I didn't know the difference. I was so busy worshiping and in the Bible, I kind of missed all the rebellious years. It was at that time of my life, it was really good for me to be heavenly minded and no earthly good. Because all the pain of it, I just kind of drifted over it. I had a great grandfather, he was awesome. It was so great. I had great uncles, all that stuff. But I really do understand the pain of that when people say, you know, get away from me. You have a choice to make. And I gave up millions and millions of dollars to be born again. And I wouldn't go back for anything. As a matter of fact, we're doing an Amish meeting. We're in this Amish meeting. You know, Amish. You know, if you have one or two Amish show up to a meeting you're doing, that's like a crusade. We had 70 Amish and bishops and all that sneak into a barn, and the leaders in the area were like, you need to come in here, you need to sneak you in the back, and nobody can see you. I'm like, wow, this is like mafia. <laughs> hmm. And there's a buggy parked out there, and Heather's got her rock star high heels on, she's walking through the lawn, you know, and she's aerating their lawn for them. And we're coming in there, you know, and... <laughs> I grew up in the country, but I lived in the city a long time. And so we're just like, hey, and, and we're there. And I'm doing air guitar when I'm preaching to them. And I don't know who these people are. And they're just looking at me like, oh. yeah, I'll tell you what, when you try to do air guitar for Amish, they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I'm just going through the thing. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, tell them your story. And I had a discussion with the Lord. I said, I don't want to tell them my story. I don't like talking about my story. And the Lord said, tell them. I said, sir, I'm yours to command. So I told them. At 13, I got radically born again, saw healings, demons, deliverances, all this stuff. And I was booted out of my house. I was given the choice. And I went down the whole thing. Told them. And it was so gripping. And the spirit of the Lord came on it. And I said, and I would never go back to it. And the choice to serve Jesus over family and all the property I could have had was worth it. Now, unbeknownst to me at the time, if Amish give their life to Jesus, they lose everything. Now, people say, aren't they Christians? Not really. It's kind of more like a cult. And, and a lot of good people in it. I'm not trying to put anything down, but we ministered to so many, hundreds of them, thousands of them. And all of a sudden, as I said this, this big man in the back stands up, right? And he begins to like grab his beard and grab his hair and hat and all this stuff. And he starts just crying out. And he started to say, I, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I don't care. I want Jesus. And then another one stood up. I want Jesus. And they started doing it all over the room. And then the whole place stood up. And they began to roar, we want Jesus. So I led them in the sinner's prayer. And they get born again. And I'm on my knees weeping. Heather's there. We're crying. And this is happening. And suddenly, I just shouted out, but wait, there's more. <laughs> so we're in this place. And they're, saying, they're, they're getting born again. They're all saved. And I said, you need power from the Holy Ghost. You need power from on high. Are you ready to be filled? And they're like, yes. They were so full of faith. They didn't even know what I was talking about. And when they said, yes, I said, okay, I'm going to pray for you. And right as I went to go pray for them, they all began to roar in tongues. All of them. I'm talking, it was like a, a, like a waterfall, a roaring waterfall. And I'm just crying and saying, only God could have done this. And it was like an Acts chapter two moment. But I'll tell you, your presence demands an explanation. And here's the thing, though, is that when you begin to get the yoke busted off you, you're going to do exploits that you don't qualify for. 
Lord came to me about two years ago. Came to me. And the, now these things don't happen with me every day. That's why I talk about them so monumentally. Because he comes to me periodically, and it's really powerful when he does. But he came to me one particular time, and he looked at me and I just in, in the spirit, just right there. And a vision opened up to me, and I saw something. And the Lord said, you're going to see this. A rocket's going towards the moon. You're going to see some things with it. When you see that in the news, you'll know what I'm about to tell you is of me. I was like, wow, that's great. And the Lord told me a number of things that were coming to happen and what he was going to do with our ministry. And he said, but here's the thing, really clearly to me. He said, if you will stay small in your own eyes, I can use you. And I want to use you, Joseph. And my heart got really heavy with that because it dawned on me how many people don't stay small in their own eyes. And that he had to tell me that. And so, of course, I hit my knees, and in that same circumstance, that same timing, he came in, and suddenly my life got scooped up. It was like I wasn't there, and, it, and I felt like I was being examined by the Lord. That's a wild, uh, that was very intense for me. And I said, Lord, are we okay? Like, we're good, right? It was scary. And it was kind of like I was sat back down in myself. And I said, are we good? And then I heard the Lord say these words. Jesus is Lord. And then I had a vision of the devil. Wild stuff. I'm looking at that, and he's there on his knees. And then I heard the words, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess, Jesus is Lord. And I thought, okay. And then I heard these words as I was looking at it. I thought, look at that. He's bowing the knee. And then I heard these words, but he's going to have to say it. He has to say the words. Jesus is Lord. And I know in my life, God began to lead me and take me on a wild journey. We're on it right now. I'm so grateful for it. And he sent us to everything from stadiums to political leaders to rock stars on their buses, prophesying to them. We're on one rock star's bus, and, and they were saying all this stuff, and they got all these people there, and I'm like, hey! <laughs> I'm like, the Spirit of the Lord told me, tell them what their mother and their father told them about them and where they were at and what was going to happen in their life and how they're going and that they actually had a prophetic calling. And they had melted down. And the Lord began to deal with them. I've, I've been in different places. I was in a meeting where a billion-dollar merger was happening. I was in this meeting, and this billion-dollar merger was taking place in a major industry. And they had me there to pray at the end. So I'm praying at the end, and they're like, Joseph, pray. And the Spirit of the Lord, Pastor Sean, comes on me so strong. And I stood up from the table, and I began to have a vision about the men. And the Lord said, you tell him exactly what I tell you to say. Yes, sir. And the Lord said, tell him I know him. And I looked at this man and I said, sir, God says he knows you. This is a business meeting. And this guy fell back like that. And then I began to tell him, the Lord started showing me. He got into a fight in an alley, a knife fight. Here's the scar. Here's what happened on your body. This is how these things took place with you. And here's the whole story of events that took place leading you up to where you are now. And he just burst put his face in his hands, and I said, and you're on your way to hell. That's called prophetic evangelism. And I said, you need to repent and give your life to Jesus. And right there, he looked up and said, I'll do whatever you say. Because <laughs> he was so impacted. He said, I'm going to get saved. And he had a partner with him. I'm getting saved. You're getting saved. And we're going to do this thing. And then he did, and then he ran out of the room. He ran to the room, got in the car, took off, and he left. I said, what happened? And the guy who was trying to seal a deal with him looked at me and said, thank you, Joseph. <laughs> I get a phone call about a half hour, 40 minutes later, and a friend of mine's on the phone. He's like, bro, what did you do? He's with you 30 minutes and he gets saved? I said, well, yeah, I, I, praise God. He said, no, you don't understand. You don't understand. 
He was a committed atheist, hated the things of God. If anybody brought God up to him, he would say these words. He would cuss you and then say, he doesn't know me. So this guy got saved, and we've had communication for a long time. It's still wild out there, but I'll tell you what, it's been good. And the Lord sends me to these places. I was in a business leaders meeting like this one time, and I began to minister. And all of a sudden, a guy's sitting there, and I was just, they had me come up to pray a quick prayer and bless this meeting and all that. And I, and I saw this man sitting over to the side, and the Lord said to me, tell that man that the universe didn't bring him here. I did. I'm like, Jesus, this is not my meeting. I said, but I'm yours to command, sir. <laughs> I said, you were brought here by God, not the universe. And he's like, ow! And I said, and you're going to hell. Prophetic evangelism. <laughs> and he jumps up. And I said, and if you want to know Jesus, you need to run to the altar right now. He jumps up and runs to the altar, gives his life to Jesus in this business leaders meeting. I'm trying to get off the stage. And as that happens, a lady screams in the back, ah! stands up and says, I don't know what's happening in my body. And I was like, what's taking place? And she stands up and says, about 20, 30 years ago, I had a surgery and I've been in constant pain ever since then. And I don't know what's happening, but my back just, just quit hurting. She didn't even know how to say healed. It's the pain is gone and it's warm and it's electric. And, ah! <laughs> and these guys come up and they're like, well, why don't you come on up here and testify, ma'am? She comes up and then another person starts getting healed. Then another one runs to the altar. And the next thing you know, the three minute prayer turned into one o'clock in the morning. The Lord would say, the Lord would say, it was awesome. <laughs> I believe everywhere we go, our presence should demand an explanation. I'm not even good at evangelism. I'm really bad at it. I really am. I usually cut to the chase. A or B, bro. <laughs> Some of you would be way better at it. Please stay good at it. <laughs> I tell them things about their life, then they freak out, and then they're like, what, who are you? I'm like, I'm just sent from God. And then they freak out. I've tried evangelizing people at you know, drive throughs and I tell them about their life. They're like, yeah, that's true. And they're like, do I know you? And that goes over really awkward. It's better to just lead people to Jesus through relationship or whatever you can do. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lady right here, you're awesome. Yes, you. Hat on the neck, head. You look great. I bless you. You know, the Lord's peeling layers off you right now. I'm watching it happen. I'm watching what came against you breaking. The chains are breaking. You're absolutely getting free more and more and more. That part of 30, 60, 100 fold, that's your journey right now. And God's going to break you through. And here's another thing. I see an anointing coming into your life. You're holding hands with it. I see a legacy growing. I see the Spirit of the Lord opening up the double doors for you and saying it's not too late at all. Not at all. For I have a beautiful future for you, and I'm going to make such a way for you and your family that it multiplies, and it continues to grow, and it continues to outgrow the yoke. For I have not forgotten the prayers prayed over you at 12 years old. For I know you, and I know who I call, and you are called, and you are set apart. I see a woman's prayers over your life, and I see a man who joined her. And their words come up before me, and I am calling you forward unto myself yet again. You can't hide from my spirit, for you belong to me. And I am a jealous God, and I know you, and I made you. I'm looking at your life right now. There are three hurdles that are behind you and they're, they're shackled to you like a chain. And the Lord's saying, I'm bursting those. Those are over with. It's over. Over with. Done. Over. Thank you, Jesus. God is awesome. Zindro da us. Thank you, Jesus, the mighty God of Israel. America better stand with Israel. 
people into that replacement theology nonsense. Better get away from that. That's a cursed doctrine. Doesn't matter what they do politically. There's a covenant with the land. This nation didn't have it all together either. But there's some good people in this land, and there's a covenant with this land. But not like Israel. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Man. God is good. Is it okay if I wander here for a second? Praise Jesus. God is doing things in this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Heidi, I see the word curriculum. I see strength coming around you with the word curriculum. I see it around you. I see the Spirit of God beginning to mark you and beginning to advance teaching through you, equipping, foundation. It's like cradle to grave stuff. And God's moving through you in that capacity. But there's a hidden thing that's very good, and it's right now kind of in a veiled space that you're going to bring out, and it's going to help a lot of people. It's a vision from God. He's given it to you. And it's going to be like an, an equipping mantle anointing that begins to be released through a revelatory process from you. God's called you. You've carried this at seasons and then it was put away again. They carried it and it was put away again. Then carried it and put away again. And I see you coming now to the point that it's going to begin to radically burst forth. Springtime. Something's big about the month of April with you, systematically and cyclic. I see a breakthrough coming somewhere in springtime. I bless you in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Whom I call, I equip. Man of God, I chose you, not another. Somebody said words that God had other choices, and then this happened here. And the Lord is saying unto you, I chose you first. First choice. And the Spirit of the Lord has put his authority on you to teach, to break through, and to shatter religion. Not just in form and formality, but I mean shatter religion because of the true liberty of Christ Jesus in you. I see people getting the fight inside answered because of your teaching. And the Lord is saying, I'm beginning again with you now, and a multiplier will come, and there will be walls kicked out, and there will be an advancement of this calling, and there will be those that have come and those that have left, but the Spirit of the Lord says, I maintain the word I gave you in the beginning, and I am faithful to complete it in you. I see another man, stood, he should have stood with you. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, he is no longer there, but I'm bringing another righteous replacement. I'm bringing this replacement because strength will begin to arise. Oh, Jesus. I've had to rearrange some things to get the freedom here that you carry. Conversations, information, Confidence trying to be broken. And the Lord says, I sustain you because you are mine. And I watch over this ministry and I watch over you. You're called to great exploits in this area. I see you reflecting the glory of the Lord to many people. And they walk away and talk about the goodness of God that has come through your ministry. I see the written word expanding through your vessel. The written word is going to begin to flow like water. For God has ordained it. Thank you, Father. There was a journey, and it took a very serious segment of time of your life to come to this location. It didn't cost much, just everything. And the Lord is saying, you have come this far, and I will see you to the other side. I will see you to the other side, because I've given you the armor bearer to go with you.
And the Lord says, the words don't stick. They can't hurt you. Arrows can't hurt you. Uh, you're going to begin to come through it all in the name of Jesus. Financial ripples will not hurt you. There's going to be strength and a multiplier and an abundance that begins to come with great fervency, with strength, like a river of water flowing through this place in Jesus' name. And the Lord is saying, expand the vision. Expand your calling. Think bigger. Go higher. I see many good words on your life where people have spoken to you and they've been straight from the Spirit of the Lord. And I see one intense one that was not of me. It was well wishing for you. And the Lord says, I remove even the very remnants of that. For I have called you and I've equipped you. Have I not called you to be a giant slayer? Have I not called you to be a gladiator trainer? Man of God, there's a difference between being a gladiator and a gladiator trainer. I've made you a trainer of gladiators. You're going to raise up ones that are stronger, better equipped, and more agile than you. But unto them, you will be the master teacher. Because I've anointed you this way to represent my word unto them. So now I begin again. Now I'm going to share this and I'll share it politely, but I see a, like a, a blade that has come down to take care of you and to remove that which is not of God trying to have access to your life through people that wanted to do things. And the Lord says, it was not rejection, it is protection. You're a good man, sir. You are God's man. You're a warrior. And you are a champion in Christ Jesus. And you have your feet where God planted you. I see three phases to your life. You are completing phase one. And you are coming into phase two. And phase two is going to be glorious. It's going to be powerful. There's going to be a lot of fighting and taking territory. Phase three will be completely different than the first two. There will be a transitional grace on phase three. And you'll know when it comes on you like a cloak. God will begin to empower you. And right when you think, well, I accept this, Lord. This is what I'm going to do. And you're very pleased. The Lord's going to change the narrative. And he's going to give you everything you never knew you wanted. You guys are awesome. Can we stretch our hands towards the pastor? This is God's man. With great respect, I put my hand on the pastor. This is God's man. And strength will rise, and victory is here. There's going to be a changing of the way things have been done into the way that God requires it for victory. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless you in Jesus' name, for I put these gifts within you. I took you from one journey and into my journey, says the Lord. You've given your whole life to me. And I empower you with strength. I empower you with Holy Spirit endurance, for I call you a builder. I call you a builder, a foundation layer a roof maker, a builder. And I hear the Lord saying, as you stay in these disciplines, and as you continue to walk before me, I have much to bring to you that I will make you ruler over and give you much responsibility. These are not man's wishes. These are my wishes. Only walk closely with me. Do not be enamored by anything, and I will take you all the way to your destination for the good of my people. And I love you. I love you. I love you. I bless the man of God. Wow. Do I like your pastors? They are awesome. 
It is a privilege to be in this house. You guys are wonderful. Like, wonderful. I'm serious. If, if you're looking, if you're thinking about making this your home church, don't wait. Seating is limited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man of God, a spirit of exhortation on you, encouragement and strength in the spirit of Christ is working through you right now. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The joy of the Lord is your strength in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yes, I hear that. I really do. And the Lord says, according to your faith, be it unto you. In Jesus' name. Heather will pray for you. And strength will begin to happen. I bless the man of God. You're a good man, sir. For there is light and there is favor in your future. I'm looking at a complicated lock that had to be taken off your life. And the Lord has moved you from one phase to another. You're in transition. But strength is coming for you. And so is the spirit of grace. I bless you now with empowerment in the name of Jesus, that an empowerment would come. Unlike anything you've experienced in your life, and real results would continue to manifest. For I am the Lord your God, your healer, and I make a way where there is no way. Because that gift of exhortation and encouragement for they who refresh others, will they themselves be refreshed. And the Lord is bringing refreshing to your house. I bless the man of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Is it okay that I'm just kind of wandering here? How many will give me five more minutes? If I show of hands, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. All right. Now we're... We used to have a saying in our ministry, the later it gets, the earlier it gets. <laughs> oh, we're not going to do that to you. I'm just going to minister just a little bit longer. We have church coming in the morning. I want to respect the house. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I like you, lady. I don't know you, but I like you. The Spirit of the Lord is on your life. You've encouraged people. You've stood with people. You sing. There's these singing things you do. And I bless you in the name of Jesus. For I know you, says the Lord, and I bring my peace to you. And my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. But a peace that passes all understanding, not focusing on the loss or the lack. But rather I focus on the brightness of your future. We're talking about you up here. There's conversation going on. And you have a lot to do but it's going to be a good day. You please God, and that's how it is. Period. You're a good one. I bless you in Jesus' name. There will be another day in the available part, and it's going to be awesome. But you got some work to do yet. Keep singing, keep praying. Keep moving hell out of the way for crazy preachers like me. Some of the most dangerous people are women intercessors that put their face before God. I bless you in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. The spirit of joy, the spirit of strength, the spirit of clarity, just absolute encouragement. You got a Barnabas thing going on, brother. Helping people out, speaking the truth, speak life over you. I see encouragement coming to you and through you with information and revelatory understanding. And there is life in the process. You have a grace on you, a grace to lift spirits, a grace to speak a word in due season, like apples of gold and settings of silver. God's called you. He's called you. Somebody laid, laid claim to something that was not theirs many, many years ago, and it impacted you dramatically. And the Lord is saying, this is the season of do-overs. And this is the time of restoration. And this is the time where you will outrun your enemies even in the rain. And victory will begin to happen. When the world goes down, you will go up. I bless you, man of God. You're a good man. I speak life over you. Thank you, Jesus. You know when I'm ministering to people and sometimes I'm looking away or I'm looking at their shoulder or something? I'm not trying to be weird. Is that okay? I'm doing it because if I find a blank spot to look at, I can kind of focus on that. I don't want to look at people's faces. I want to like actually hear what the Lord's saying. And um, so I look at blank spaces to do that. It's actually the Hebrew word chaza. It means to gaze. Not in the weird, evil way, the good way. The Holy Ghost way means you look and God starts talking to you. Praise Jesus. People have asked me in meetings way in the past, they'd say, Joseph, when you're in meetings, you know, can you like you know, look around and do you ever see like, you know, sin? You see sin in the room? And the answer is, yeah, sometimes. And they say, well, why don't you like, you know, call that stuff out? And I said to them, it's a good idea. Why don't we start with you? <laughs> Jesus isn't here to do that. He doesn't come here to condemn you. There's been a few instances where the Lord's like, they're on their last chance. And they're going to hurt a lot of people too. And you got to tell them. And I have these little moments like, Lord, I don't want to tell him. And there was one man who was in a balcony. I'll never forget it. I looked up at the balcony. I said, sir, stop this, this, and this. Or your, your life is on the line. And here's how. And that man jumped up, ran down the altar, all the way down from the balcony back stairs and ran to the altar. And he got right with God and his family came together. And they were not in a good place. And I thought, Lord, if it's really got fruit and I'm really hearing you, I'll do it every day of the week. But that's not my nature nor what I want to do. I want to serve you. It's important. It's like um, people that are always calling out other leaders in the body of Christ, you know, that terrible person over there, this one or that one and this stuff. The bottom line is if you really got under the hood with people, like on a supernatural level, like really looked at what was there, everybody fails. I'm too busy taking care of me than to be like, how about that one over there, right? I thank God that Heather and I have had a great run. Really good. But I'll tell you what, the spirit of accusation that's in the body of Christ, not good. Because people put themselves in the place of Jesus. And Jesus is the head of the church. Now, that's not to say if people are in relationship and something negative is going on, you deal with it. Elders need to deal with it. Boards need to deal with it. It needs to be dealt with. And victims or whoever need to be really taken care of. And not intimidated so they can't stand up. That's evil. But what I am saying is, is the body of Christ needs to quit lobbing weaponry over at somebody they don't even know. If you don't know them and you're not right acquainted with that scenario, be quiet. 
That's the body of Christ we're talking about. I like Galatians 6. You who are spiritual, restore such a one. Spiritual people think they're supposed to kick him. Oh, yeah, you're down? Uh. I'm supposed to restore. We need to look at it that way. Deal with it. Cut out the cancer. Doesn't mean they get to do what they once did. I don't know why I'm saying this. This is important. Man, we've got a lot of armchair quarterbacks that get in comments on YouTube and Facebook, social media, whatever, and they're just like, this is what it ought to be. And this is, it's like, well, get out of your mom's basement. And come talk to me like a man. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> a lot of tough cowboy keyboard warriors out there. So tough. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In our ministry, I'm really thankful for block and delete. <laughs> Praise God. You guys are awesome. Sir, you're about to see a promotion come. That's good. You're about to see something begin to open up for you. You've been waiting on. I see favor on your life. You know, there's been a, I see a spirit that's tried to come after you of self-pity. That's not who you are. And you don't act that way. You're a good man. But I see this thing that tries to come at you and it tries to knock on your door because there's a lot of reasons to go, ugh. And the Lord is saying, I have something in store for you that's going to promote you forward. So you keep running. I'm encouraging you. You're doing a good job. You keep running because God's hand is on your life. You're a good brother. And you got stuff to do for the kingdom that's going to open up ingenuity. It's going to open up like a, you think like an engineer. It's going to open things up that really begins to resolve issues for other people. And so I just bless you in the name of Jesus. You're a capable man of God. And I speak strength over you and multiplication. And I break off every familiar family spirit that would try to make an impact on you right now. In Jesus' name, you're a good brother. And you've got longevity on you. You're not going to be like the other one. There's something about this track record that's come through your lineage, and the Lord's saying, not you. So you take that word and work it. Because God is with you. So I speak healing in every part of your body. An advancement in every part of your body right now. The Spirit of the Lord advancing that strength, endocrine, cardio. All of this come together right now. Every hormone in balance, balance right now for the man of God. God is healing you. He's touching your body in Jesus' name. No more worrying about it when you wake up in Jesus' name. I command strength and no fatigue right now. Jesus' name. Brother, I like you. You're a good dude. Bless you in Jesus' name. Lord told me recently, Joseph, just do the work. And everything will be all right. Sir, in every area that's required, just do the work. You're a hard worker. I can see it on you. Like you work hard. You're a faithful guy. Many people talk about their own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. I'm telling you, you're full of God. And you got longevity in front of you. I'm just shooting the monkeys that try to jump on your back. Because God's with you. I bless you, sir. Thank you for your service in the kingdom. And in other parts of society. Thank you. Shorabakithas. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We okay? Man, we got to raise up a bunch of prophetic ministers so I'm not wandering around like with a flashlight. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like, do, do, do. Praise God. Aha. You guys are amazing. You know that? You too. You really are. I tell you guys. It's like the 1990s was a very different season for you guys. There was something going on there, that, and then it all changed. And the Spirit of the Lord began to draw you for. 
Now, I'm just going to share what I just saw. And it's either... I saw airplane wings. And I saw something to do with a destination. And I saw the Lord bringing you and then taking you and then bringing you back. And the Spirit of the Lord giving you great favor in places you've never thought you would participate with. You guys are called to the Lord. There's a strong anointing on your household. There's a strong anointing on your family. I see you've stood with leaders and sometimes had to walk things through with them. Almost like you'd, like a firefighter, like you'd put their arm on your shoulder and take them through. You are a righteous, strong man that knows exactly what God wants done, and you do it. And yet you're not mean, you're not stubborn, you're not any of those things. You're actually a very flexible, righteous person that says, we can work this out. You have a spirit of meekness. Meekness. For I have equipped your household, and I've equipped this woman of God with grace and graciousness and joy. And in this joy will come a yoke-breaking power. And I release it again in your house. There was a wave that came through your family one time, and it's going to come through again. And the Lord's saying, I will open up the double doors to you and make the crooked places very straight. I see one that ran, or there's a, this person that's gone, and the Lord says, oh, they will come back. I'm already pulling on them. Don't believe what you're told. I'm working it all out for you. Boy, they don't stand a chance. It's like their ear is there and there's words going in their ear. And the Lord is saying, yeah, I sent that. Hallelujah. I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Now I see a piece of paper slapped down on the table. I see a pen coming out. I see information going through it. I see a ciphering and a close reading and then getting to it. And you look at each other and go, mm-hmm, and a signature. And the Spirit of the Lord is going to bring an advancement and strength will rise and it will be good. And here's what I like about you, sir. You're over it all. You're over the silliness of a lot of it. I can see it on you. It's kind of like, yeah, been there, done that. I want to do what's significant now. Give me significance. With you, it's not about the stuff. It's about the significance. And God's waking up a generation of men just like you that are going to stand up and roar back at the darkness, show young men what manhood is. Breaking their shackles off their minds. Now, I'm not talking about hypo-machoism here, hyper macho activity. I'm just talking about what men do, how men lead, how men live. And you're a catalyst and a mentor, and God's marked you. I just like you. She's a, she's a come on. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Yeah, she's like prophetic. She's got all this stuff going on that just begins to slice and dice with prayer. Your prayer time will get stuff done. Like you will cut the enemy. You come walking over, you're going to go limping back, devil. It's awesome. She's in that category too. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. He's anointed you. Great peace have them who love his law. The Spirit of God. I saw a golden birdcage on your life. People said, oh, isn't that good? Isn't that wonderful? But it was really difficult. And the Lord made changes. And changes are beginning to happen in your life that will give you brightness and radiance. And that's coming for you. Brightness and radiance and the fullness thereof in Jesus' name. And the removal of all the pretty golden bars. The cage. I bless the woman of God. I speak life over you. 
I've called you. You two are like, there's like this Miriam anointing. Mir Miriam. These prophetess type anointing that just ushers in a move of God. It's good. Super good. You know, this place is a catalyst for some pretty powerful stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man. Then we get going, we start ministering, you start seeing things, and, and it just begins to unfold. So here's what we're going to do. Your pastor's been so gracious um, to allow us to receive an offering tonight. And I want to thank you for that. That's really gracious of you guys. And so I'm going to give an opportunity to do that. Um, and so Jason, you want to come up here? This is Jason. Jason's been with me like forever, like 15 years or something. Yeah, go ahead if, if we want to do that. Let, let me just do this real quick. We have offering envelopes here uh, that we're going to pass out uh, to everybody. And if you want to receive or give in this offering tonight, I hope you do. I hope you'll stand with us. Um, because we have a vision in our ministry to raise up a million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers to go reach a billion, a million for a billion. Our goal is to make God rich by giving him what he doesn't have, lost creation. And we right now have this building, and I have TV networks that are contacting us. And look, I, I'm not all about TV and all this crazy stuff, but I believe that we have a message that needs to get out, and we're looking for partners, for partners. So you have an offering envelope there, or you can also, if you'd like, we have partner brochures, or you can probably partner through this offering envelope too. But um, if you want to be interested in partnering with us to send Heather and I all over the place, Moscow, you know, crazy places, TV, all that stuff, would you consider partnering with us? We'd love to have you. You know, when you partner in our ministry, we call you regularly. We never solicit. We never do any of that crazy stuff. But we will call you and we pray with you. Our prayer team often goes and they start crying because they, they get a chance to, you know, pray with some of y'all. And it's wonderful. If you want one of these, hold up your hand. Jason will bring it to you. Please. Thank you very much, you guys. You know, it's really a great brochure. It's got all kinds of nice writing for the ladies, a lot of pictures for the guys. It's a great, great brochure. <laughs> so it's great, but it's partnership. And we'll be in touch with you. And uh, I hope everybody has an offering envelope. If you'd like an offering envelope or a partner brochure or both, raise your hand, please. These guys are just getting them all to you. Just hand out offering envelopes to everybody. Praise God. If you don't want to give tonight, hand it to your neighbor and say, you give. Hallelujah. No, we really are believing for some magnificent things. Right now we have a building um, that we got. It's worth about three and a half million dollars. We got into it for much less than that. We paid it way down. I think we got into it for just under a million or one point something, 1.1. We paid it down to about 500. Then we have to do a bunch of remodels and we got to put studios in and we're creating a lot of stuff. We've got fiber optic cables put in. And so now we're at about a $1.2 million complete. Pay the building off, total renovation. Everything is awesome. So if anybody feels like, man, God's telling me to really do something, please don't hesitate. We got a lot to do. Praise God. But brochures and offering envelopes, I hope you get that. And please fill out the partnership brochure. You can also see in the back, there's a, a scan code right in there. So you can use your phone, scan that in, and it'll take you to where you need to be. You can partner that way, right in the brochure. Praise God. Well, you guys having fun? It was very gracious of your pastors to allow us to do this. Thank you. Whenever we get an offering, we always tithe back to the house we come to. I believe in that very much. So when you give, we're going to bless this house too. Praise you, Jesus. Praise God. Well, let me pray for it before we start collecting them. Let me pray. If you uh, have your offering with you, hold it up in your hand, please. You can make checks out to uh, Joseph Z Ministries. Um, if you want to give cash, you know, whatever you want to do, you can use your card. You can go to josephz.com. Let me pray over this right now. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak increase and favor over every gift and every giver, even, even everyone who, if they've already sown, I just speak favor over every gift and every giver in the name of Jesus, that there'd be a multiplier, that there'd be increase to them, that the prophetic reward would come upon their life. I declare ax heads floating. I declare oil not running out. I declare a fish, if it has to cough up a coin for someone, that it happens in Jesus' name. Lord, I speak blessing over every person in the sound of my voice, every gift and giver in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Everybody shout out to your offering. Go and come back again and bring friends. Hallelujah. People say to me all the time, I don't give to get. I do. I do. Oh, thanks, Jace. We got some teaching back here too. I should show this to you. Um, we brought a bunch of teachings. We've got this teaching I did a little while ago called Surviving a Jacked Up World. That's available at the table. Anybody want this teaching? You need to survive? Sweetheart, you want it? Well, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, this one here is called Forging of a Leader. This is hours and hours of teaching of how to develop the spiritual walk God has for you and character. This is an awesome teaching. Jason, somebody should get that. I'll take that one. Then I have uh, the audio version here of the book I just wrote, Demystifying the Prophetic. It's audio and video. And I do a teaching on this. This is really wild stuff. I go into Prophecy 101 and I go way into the spooky stuff and uh, stay with the Bible the whole time. It's really important. So here's the book, Demystifying the Prophetic and the Accompanying Manual. Um, I just like to make these things available. These are all at the table back there, but I just want to show you this stuff. This book went number one right away. And I was very grateful for that. I've had three number ones come out. And I'm really grateful for it because, look, it's never about, oh, we went number one. Oh, we're so whatever. It's about the people it's reaching. So when we get big numbers like that, I just know we're hitting targets. We're hitting people's lives with truth, and it's helping them. And this book here is awesome. I put my whole life into this. Uh, this took me my whole life to write. And it has a manual that comes with it, so you can do study groups and all that about the prophetic. There's stuff in this book nobody has ever written about anywhere that I know of. Uh, Rick Renner did the forward, so did Lance Wallnow, and a lot of people uh, did it in there. Mario Murillo wrote in here. I think I've got a number of people that just really helped me with this. Anybody want this combo? Find somebody that looks like they need to hear God, Jason. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say a couple things with us here just before we kind of get to the end. Man of God and that, your young guy in the flowery shirt there, like a, looks like you've been to Hawaii or something. God's hand is on you and favor is on your life. There's a hungering and thirsting for righteousness and it's almost like you don't fit in with some of the other gang around you completely. It's because you're separated under the Lord. And God has a mighty calling on you. You have a business anointing. You have a clarity to accomplish things. You're brilliant. Like brilliant. I see you ciphering different than other people and solving problems faster than other people. You are anointed by God. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Because listen to me. The foundation of the front end of what you're building towards the Lord is going to greatly establish you in the days after that. I'm talking like your late 20s into your 30s. When you get into your 30s, there's this wave of calling that's going to overtake you. You're brilliant. I see you ciphering data different than other people. I see you putting information together different than other people. And the hand of God is so on you. No evil can befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. For I am the Lord your God, and I do not fail. I am your son, I am your shield, and I am bestowing much favor and much reward. And I see gates that are trying to hold you back, and they are breaking as I'm looking at you. They're breaking open. What is impossible with man 
is nothing unto the Lord. God called you. You belong to him. I like you. You're an awesome guy. The enemy tried to stop you at a very young age. Tried to wipe you right out. It's too late. You got stuff to do, man of God. I bless you and I honor you. I'm looking at you with the eyes of the Spirit and what God sees is David. You're awesome. I'd have come all the way here just for you. I bless you, man of God. Don't you ever be afraid of anybody's face. You do what God calls you to do. You're a weapon in the hand of the Lord. You keep reading that Bible. You keep saying your prayers. You keep doing your push-ups. When I travel, I bring hanging pull-up stuff with me. I put them in, you know, like doors wherever I can find it, little clamps. And I just like, come on, Jesus, I'm not going to be one of those preachers, you know. <laughs> <sighs> Take the photo, rain it in, you know. <laughs> You're God's man. Bless you in Jesus' name. Wow, there's a marking on your life. Even a blind prophetic person could see that. Hallelujah, okay. God is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Prophetic meetings never end. You have to abandon them. <laughs> you simply have to abandon them. We're going to have church tomorrow. I plan to do a little bit more whiteboard instruction. I plan to really get into some teaching. I just was led by the Spirit tonight because there's something happening in our nation. Let me say a few words of encouragement. I could draw on the board what I'm about to talk about. Could, could I take five minutes and draw? I'll just do it very quickly, okay? Because I know we've been here a minute, but I need to show you something. I know where the future is going. The Lord has showed me some things. I'm going to go quickly for, for all of our sake. Let me do this. I saw this in a meeting. God began to speak to me, okay? I saw it like this. This is a sign of the USA. I saw it going down at 30, 60 to 100 fold. It's one of my languages. I saw it coming back at 30, 60 and 100 fold. And there was gonna be a great segment of time. During this, I saw a great storm break out in the United States, all over the world really, this great storm. I saw it in a dream, I saw it in a vision and Heather and I were looking at it in this vision and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, don't run from it, run to it, lean into it. And when I saw this, I saw a shelter under here. And then I saw the words revival breaking out in the storm. On the other side of the storm, there was reformation. With reformers. There's going to be many things that take place. This is a time of darkness. Or, I'll call it a better word, redemptive instability. Okay? And this is a season of time. I happen to believe it looks a lot like this. I believe this is what the storm's going to look like. I saw this at the beginning of the year. I saw January here. I saw July here. I drew this in December of 23. And you can see the whole year going around. I saw a river breaking loose like this and like this into the year. And it was their plans to stop 45 And I've been texting with Chris Reed uh, 
tonight, even during the meeting. <laughs> and uh, we've been talking a little bit, and he's sharing words with me. I'm sharing words with him because he's seen some things too, and a few of us have. I've been talking with uh, uh, my buddy Alan DiDio and like Todd Coconato, some of these guys, and they're doing meetings right now. And we're all like sharing videos with each other and saying, the Lord is showing us this, and we're all on the same page. We're seeing something. And what I saw at the beginning of the... Um, the year is that they were going to throw everything at him, including the kitchen sink. And in July, something would break. But then it would create three challenges. Okay. So when I landed with this line, it roughly landed on July 11th. Then they said, they're not going to do the, um, the sentencing on July 11th for 45. And look, this whole thing doesn't rely on 45, but it's very serious right now. We got to pray because this is a key to where we're going. Okay, and so I saw this, the sentencing got moved into September. Okay, so that happened. Our prayers changed it. I saw new characters that would be talked about. All these things that they would try to bring on the scene. Um, I prophesied since 2022, by the favor and grace of God, that there would be an attempt on him. Then I prophesied for the last six months about a shot heard around the world. We even released that word this morning before it all happened, that there'd be a shot heard around the world. And it would start to change things. I believe that this is where we are. And we're coming through this, of course, and then it'll be this he has to get over. He got over one. By prayer, I believe this sentencing got moved then number two is going to be either this new character and this assassination attempt. Two and three is going to be the general time where we pick our leaders. That'll be the third one. And I've been praying against a red October and a dark November. But the Lord said, pray for rain. So I see this coming very quickly, guys. At the end of this year, obviously we go into the following year, and then it's going to start all over again, another cycle. I believe we're on a four-year window of right-sizing. And if we stand and we can stomach it and we have the faith to stand up in this nation, we will see America go another generation. But at the end of this time here, at 30, 60, and 100-fold, I saw this, and this was when the new America began to take place. The new America at the end of that. Now, it might not mean better. You know, and I could draw a whole lot of things on here. I just want to give you a quick overview. Doesn't mean better, but it could be. It could be. I believe we can defeat wokeism. I believe we can rescue our children from these perverts. I believe we can begin to see the Spirit of God standing up and saying, this is my country, it's my land, and another generation can hold these things back. And there are way more of us than there are of them. There just are. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now look, I am not trying to make political things about everything, but... I'll tell you what, we need to be supporting things like Gene Bailey and what he's doing, and we need to be supporting so many of these movements that are out there, just standing up against what's going on, because we need to save America from the wickedness that's trying to come on the land. When you got sick perverts like Bill Gates trying to tell you what you ought to do and buy up farmlands, I think we ought to export him. Anyway, maybe tomorrow I'll tell you how I feel about it. <laughs>